everyone, my name is Cliff and welcome back to my channel. This is Cliff's Dark Gems. Today I'm going to be giving some more channel news. Um, planning, channel planning for the future. And I'm going to give a reading update of uh, two books that I've read so far in the second week of December. Stay tuned. Okay everyone, so first of all I just want to give some channel news. As you know, as some of you know, recently I did a, a wildlife um, video. A lot of you responded very positively to that and I'm definitely going to be carrying on with that in future a little bit. I'm not planning on doing it and letting it replace my channel in any way. I will still for the majority of time be speaking horror, but I'm very keen to follow this as this is a passion of mine, uh, something that um, I've always enjoyed and I've always loved. And that's also why I've only read two books in the last, I think, nine, ten days. It's because I kind of got carried away with reading more on and familiarizing myself once again with books on wildlife and on birding, and in particular bird calls and bird identification. And yeah, then looking up and reading up more Southern African birds. Uh, so I definitely want to continue this. Um, I'm still thinking about how to go about it so that I don't interrupt my horror content. Uh, but yeah, so in the meantime, let's get to those two books that I was going to talk about. Okay, everyone, the first book I'm going to talk about is The Day of the Triffids by John Wyndham. Now, I forgot to mention in my previous video, uh, no, when I did my TBR, that uh, Gareth over at Books, Songs and Other Magic created this reading event called Winter of Wyndham. So, basically reading throughout the Northern Hemisphere winter, books by John Wynum. So, this is my contribution. Now, this book had a lot to offer. Um, it is a classic, post-apocalyptic classic, uh, sort of horror sci-fi novel. Sort of written in the 50s, so it's one of the first of its kind. And I really enjoyed it to a certain extent. I found it very interesting. Um, it was very interesting in some of the themes and the ideas explored. Uh, really looking at the idea of what mankind has done and that uh, kind of we kind of shoot ourselves in the foot when it comes to certain things and yeah exploring how what would happen in order to rebuild what would be the best way to rebuild civilization if things went to hell and it had a lot of these ideas and it was very interesting for me to read it but on, on an entertainment level uh, I felt a little bit kind of yeah, underdone, and I'll explain why. The first chapter is very thrilling. Uh, this man wakes up in hospital, he's had eye surgery, um, he's still covered in bandages. Now, the day previous to that, or the night previous to that, there was this uh, meteor sort of uh, showing, uh, sort of the meteor trail, and everyone was going on about how it was this incredible pyrotechnic technical display. And he couldn't see it because he had his eyes wrapped up in plasters. And when he wakes up, no one's helping him. He wakes up in the hospital bed. He takes off all his bandages and so on. And he finds out he's in the only one in hospital that can actually see. And there's absolutely chaos. And out in the streets, things are going absolutely mad. And it's thrilling. And it's exciting. And it's tense. And then in the second chapter, you go back two years to how these plants called triffids came about to be on the planet, on the earth, and it goes into a lot of scientific thing about discussion about triffids and all sorts of stuff. And then you go back to him and it's kind of exciting. Uh, you know, it's these, these survivors that go place to place and kind of the sort of things that you'd expect in a post-apocalyptic world, uh, sort of fighting, greed, um, people banding together for the wrong reasons, and it's interesting, but it's, it doesn't get that, doesn't keep that tension and suspense that I wanted, the entertainment that I wanted from the opening chapter and from what I was really expecting. Uh, so, it, so it doesn't kind of sustain that energy through the novel. Even though it presents all these interesting ideas and all these interesting 
theories and discussions and philosophical stuff, I doesn't, as an entertaining book, it didn't really work for me. Um, and that was a pity. So it was like kind of a little bit all over the place. And also the characters were a little bit dull. I'm sorry, but uh, I didn't really care for them. I tried to, but uh, yeah, the way they were written was kind of bland. And for me, that's a big part of the success, success of a novel. Not the only part, but if I don't really care, if I'm not invested in the characters, then yeah, I'm not that invested in the novel. Still, saying all that, I would still recommend it because it is a classic sci-fi novel. And there's a lot to love about it, but maybe my expectations weren't exactly met. Ah, so yeah, you can make your own minds up about that. That is the day of the Triffids. Three stars. Okay, the other book I read was a kind of longer novel, so I don't feel too bad about only reading two books. And that was Mr. Mercedes by Stephen King. And that, this is all about my All About Holly adventure uh, for the next couple of months. And this is a reading event hosted by Bad is Rad, as well as another Bibliophile Reads. Uh, it's Greg and Bad. And I'll link everything below, including Gareth from uh, Book Songs and Other Magic. And yeah, I'm probably going to review this in more detail later on in the month, but I enjoyed this. It was a fun read. I definitely would not put it among King's best novels, and it was more a thriller than a horror, um, kind of a cat and mouse game, but it was still an excellent read. Um, it starts out when this psycho killer in a Mercedes Benz decides to run over a whole lot of um, unemployed people waiting in a queue, and he runs over them, reverses, and then runs over them again. So he's taking a lot of pleasure in this. Um, and then, I think it's a couple of months later, uh, you've got Bill Hodges, who's, who was a detective on the case. The killer got away. He's never fully recovered. Um, and other things have happened in his life. And he gets a letter from the killer. Um, and there's a threat that this killer's going to strike again. And now uh, Bill Hodges, along with some other sort of uh, accomplices that you wouldn't believe, sets out and tries to find this killer, or, and yeah, it's, it's very interesting, it's a lot of fun, not Stephen King's best, but I did enjoy it. I did not think the characters, um, and I'm sorry but this includes Holly and Bill Hodges and so on, were well developed enough, as far as I know King, he develops his characters incredibly well, but I love the villain, <laughs> he was so despicably bad, and he had a very nasty relationship with his mother, which was just cringeworthy and nasty. And yeah, he, he was a good villain, um, as far as I'm concerned. So, so I liked this book. Oh, no, actually I loved this book. I gave it four stars. I really enjoyed it. Um, but it didn't blow me away completely. Um, and, but let's see also if the characters grow on me more. Because I'm going to read, as part of this All About Holly, the readathon I told you about. Every month we're going to read every book that has Holly as a character until we read the book Holly. And so next month it's Bill Hodges the second. I'm not sure what it's called, the end of watch or something, can't remember. But we're going to watch every month. We're going to sorry, we're going to read every month one of the one of the stories that lead up to Holly. Uh, so yeah, that was a good good read, Mr. Mercedes. Recommended. Um, but I wasn't blown away. Okay everyone, that's my video for today. And just to add on what I said at the beginning, um, and I said it I think the last episode, yeah my, my wildlife video didn't do perhaps as well as I would have wanted it to, but that's a besides the point. This, this is as one subscriber said to me, this is about passion. You know, this is about a passion project that I'm doing here. Um, this, is, this is the deepest thing that I fell in love with the bush as a young child. And so this is something I'd like to get off my chest and talk about and introduce to you guys. Um, so I will be doing that. Um, maybe not every week, but every second week. But I also plan on doing something at the end of episode, every episode. So maybe for like a minute, two minutes. Just do a short little thing. Uh, so those people that just want to watch my horror content, that's cool. And then at the end there's a little bit for people that want to carry on watching. Uh, and first of all, I'm going to introduce this bird that you hear on every single show. That is the loudest, most raucous bird in South Africa. 
and is so common, is incredibly common. So I will introduce him perhaps on my next episode with a little idea and with the bird sound and talk a little bit about this bird. And I'm going to do that on pretty much every episode I think. We'll see how it goes. And I also want to talk a little bit about animal behavior. Uh, maybe just introduce you to an animal you might not expect and talk about what they're doing and what you see. Uh, so that could be fun. Anyway everyone, yeah, so that's my video. Um, please leave a comment down below, tell me what you think. Take care of yourselves, keep those pages turning and cheers.